group up? No, we'll be able to see the see the comments in here. So, dude, we're live. Yeah. Hey, hey, everybody. You want to know the perfect amount of carbs to start your keto diet for max results? Stick around. We're going to right. tell you. Welcome to Keto Chat Live. Welcome, everybody. This is it. We're launched. All right. You're up next. I'm up next, huh? Make sure, yeah, make sure that you uh, give the medical disclaimer. Oh, yeah, very everyone. important. Very important. Yeah, everyone, don't wanna... Please sit down. Are you sitting down for this, everyone? Okay, medical disclaimer. This show is meant for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice nor intended to diagnose, treat, cure any conditions. If you have any medical condition, illness, disease, or are taking any medications, please hang up and call 911. If you drop dead, hang up and call 911. For questions or concerns related to any medical condition you have, please contact your medical professional. You like that? Yeah, that's you great. Feel safer? Does everyone feel safer? Yeah, yeah. That's good. We just have to, you know, the, the thing is, is since I'm a credentialed medical provider, uh, I actually have less freedom than you do, right? You could give out all the medical advice that we got a thumbs up on that. Uh, you, you could give out all the medical advice you wanted, no repercussions, but I could actually be shut down and put in a box <laughs> really? with, with, uh, duct tape over my face for the rest of my I can life. Give yeah. out medical advice, heroin. It's really good for you. <laughs> You're going to love it. Today on Keto Chat Live, the nutrition advice you never thought you were going to get. Uh, you really want to lose weight? No. <laughs> oh, boy. How long till Simon get canceled? Okay. I'm canceled already. Yeah, yeah. That's Excellent. That's, so that, that's why I got I'm you. already for offended such, everyone. That's uh, that's why I got you at such a bargain rate. So, uh, hey, everyone. Yeah, that's don't, right. Don't have too high expectations. So, uh <laughs> Hey, if you don't know, I'm Carol Freeman, board certified keto nutrition specialist. I've been following keto, gosh, now going on six years, and that's a long story for another day. Um, I coach women, especially about how to follow keto as a long-term sustainable lifestyle. And uh, hey, who are you, Simon? I am nobody. I am not certified. I am not qualified. I am qualified, apparently, to give you medical advice, but other than that, uh, yes. I'm not really... Uh, I'm not qualified at anything, but I'm here and I want to learn. I'm here to learn about ketogenic diet. So I'm on board on Keto Chat Live with Carol Freeman, who is credentialed and certified. So Yes, as, as one much as us. you want to fight that and tell me how everyone else in the world uh, says things. But with, this is going to be fun. So I'm so glad to have you here and we're going to have some fun uh, over these episodes and we, we decided that the best formula for success is going to be uh, flirting and fighting. So we will promise to give you as much of that as possible. So, yeah, definitely. So, so uh, all right. Question of the day for everyone listening, watching. Um, how many carbs a day are you eating now? Uh, that's our question of the day. Chime in. Uh, let us know. And if you don't know, I mean, who knows? You might be somebody who's following keto already. You might be somebody who isn't, and you're just keto curious. Um, I don't know. I think, Simon, you're keto curious, right? Yeah. I, well, I did it for a while, for six months. And this was a while ago. And then I lost 30 pounds when I did it. I got really, I was in good shape. And then COVID happened. And I was locked in my room. At ho or locked in my apartment, and it went out the window along with everything else that went out the window as well. So um, right. now I'm back, and I'm back on it. And uh, yeah, we've got Gabri uh, Gabriel. I'm is that that's the name, you Gabriel. Uh, Gab Gabriel Gabriel Williams here to learn. Awesome, awesome. And at uh, 50 grams or less total carbs a day, is it keto? That's a good question. Yeah, we'll be we'll be talking more about that on today's episode. So, um, so Hey Simon, what's your motivation for being keto curious? Like what's, well, you know, my dad unfortunately has dementia right now and it's really, really sad and tragic. And his mom had Alzheimer's, I guess maybe dementia. I'm not sure if I know the difference, but, um, and so, when you're watching your father 
who was always such an intelligent, funny, brilliant guy, so well read. And, you know, he was a scientist and just such a powerful mind that, it, you know, he can't even put out a sentence and he's just confused. It really brings you face to face with your own mortality um, and really makes you question your own habits. And mm. that's what I'm doing. And so I'm looking for what I could do to be healthier. It's not, I'm not so much as it, weight loss to me is like a positive byproduct. Mm. But what I really want to know is what can I do to improve cognitive function? What can I do to cut down on inflammation and just have a more profound life? Lots of people nowadays are suffering from exhaustion, brain fog, burnout, especially in this last year through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm here. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, that's what, it, with my clients at what I, that's what I call your why, like, uh, weight loss is typically the forefront of what people I'm working with, but really it's more about the quality of life and other factors that are really important. So, um, the number on the scale just ends up being a byproduct of reaching optimal health. So I'm glad you're here. Um, glad you get to get to go through this journey with me and, and learn some more in the way and Thanks. Bring some questions up too. So, uh, yeah, for me, um, you know, the reason that I'm so passionate about keto, I mean, it's a longer story. I pre you know, I'll tell that on a different day because we could spend an hour talking about my backstory. But, um, you know, I've, I've always been passionate about helping people be healthy uh, physically and mentally and just feeling as best as they can. And I went and got all the degrees that I thought would help me figure that all out. Um, I have... Uh, lots and lots of letters after my name and uh, the six figures in student loans to prove it. Um, and that didn't actually help me figure out the whole puzzle of how do I help people make long-term uh, healthy habit change and be physically and mentally healthy, love themselves, and all of that stuff that's important. And uh, 2014, I was involved in a horrible car accident, and I spent the next year and a half discovering I'd had an undiagnosed brain injury and... Uh, um, crush injuries to my legs that was causing a excruciating chronic pain syndrome in my legs. And long story short is that I ended up finding the keto diet as a way of healing my brain injury and bringing, getting my, uh, quality of life back. Um, and at the same time, it was a completely revolutionary way of eating in a way that took away appetite and cravings when I applied everything I'd ever studied, uh, to psychology. So transformed my body. And, uh, it just was the final piece of that puzzle that I've been looking for of how do I help people actually be healthy and, and feel optimal and good. So, uh, out here sharing that and helping people all over the world, really, I think I've had clients in eight different countries and it's just, um, it feels good to be alive. So um, for me, it's about living a lifestyle that gives me the freedom of no longer being constantly obsessed with food and craving and overeating, uh, feeling free of pain, feeling free of, uh, you know, joint aches and uh, all those kind of things that we're told is like a normal part of getting older and um, having lots of energy throughout the day, quality of life, and then also being that example and supporting my clients as they transform their life as well. So um, we've got a uh, Dad Bosworth is chiming in here about uh, heroin is probably safer than the other drugs. The doctor hand out. I was badly damaged by tramadol taken uh, as prescribed. All right. So uh, yeah, right. we've got our medical professional here to consult. Let's uh, what, what do you say about that, Simon? <laughs> yes. Yeah, see, I'm right. You know, there you are. I'm from Seattle. So, you know, you can start a grunge band and you can, uh, you know, do heroin. And it's a lot of fun here in oh, Seattle. Right. Well, it looks like we're already getting some trolls on the show, which means we will ban it. We're going to ban that person. Uh-oh, uh, what would they say? Either. Well, they're asking for um, that I should flash my milkers is what they said. So we'll just block that person. Is that, that ketogenic? Person. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Right. That person's no longer allowed to see the show. That's great. That's great. All right. Get those out of the way. Nope. Um well, you know, it might be popular. We might get more popular. I don't know, you know. If yeah, we just, yeah. I mean, we did this in a hot tub or something. No, nothing that would remove my medical credentials there. But uh, I don't know that that would appeal to the ladies that I'm trying to appeal to. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, no, we're not going to. We're not. Gonna yeah, no. 
Yeah. That's fine. Re that's, I'm glad that that person revealed themselves early on so that we could just block them and, and move on with the show with the good quality stuff that there you are here for. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, and maybe there's an only only fans keto podcast you can go check out instead instead of us. You know. Yeah, yeah. So you have a background in radio, Simon. Did you guys get trolls, or you had a screener that could avoid those people calling in, right? Yeah, no, we we didn't get too many trolls. Oh, uh, trolling in, you know. But it's just life nowadays. Hmm. It's the internet. Yay! There's not a troll. Is Carrie Campbell? Hi, Carrie. She also lives in Seattle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Can you play drums or bass in our new band, Carrie? <laughs> maybe, her, maybe her boyfriend Bob can. There you are. Uh. Let's get a band going. <laughs> we could go to my mom's garage and practice. Oh, my God. You're just going to, like, reboot your, your uh, 20s and go back and do things right? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Can we pause this? I'll get my flannel. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have some Timberlands? Timberlands, I do actually. Okay, <laughs> you are a C okay Seattle. Yeah, I think that's why I, had to move away. More, I think Timberlands are more East Coast. People don't wear they wear them out here. Well, they did back when I moved. I moved to Seattle in '93, yeah. and that was like part of the uniform then. So it's more Birkenstocks. Now, yeah, yeah, for sure. Still flannels, flannels and Birkenstocks and socks. All right, Carrie's not musical. All right, we tried. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, um. So our topic today is going to be, um, so we're starting a series here. So we're going to have a 10 part series on the 10 easy rules to follow, uh, to get started with keto for quick results, not only get started, but restart too. So if you're somebody who's had some success on keto, falling off the wagon, you can't figure out what to do to get started again. Um, this 10 part series, you gotta, you gotta check it out. So today we're going to be focusing on, um, the first rule. Number one is the first easy rule to follow to get started with keto is going to be, um, 20 total grams of carbs. But before we get into that, I think actually I want, uh, I want to have Simon bring up our, uh, news segment. So, um, I'm moving, I'm moving our order around. So can you handle that? Are you flexible, Simon? Yes. Okay. So I was telling Carol just right before we went on that I was scrolling through Google news and I see this article that's telling you how bad ketogenic diet is for you. Oh, it's mm -hmm. not healthy, blah, blah. It's on this like health website. So I read the article and I get down to the bottom and you know how nowadays online at the bottom of articles, they'll have links to, Oh, you like this article? You should try this article. So, right. At the bottom of the article on how keto is bad for you, there's literally an article telling you how great the ketogenic diet is on the same website. And I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, what, what is going on? Are you kidding me? Yeah, right? So, same website. So confusing. So confusing. Um, you know, just a little bit of why that is, is that the way that online news sites uh, or places that provide like a lot of content articles um, is that they actually use search term seekers. You know, they use tools that tell them what are people searching for a lot. Let's write an article that has that exact search term as the headline. And so then they'll put out a call. There, there are email lists that, uh, you know, healthcare providers can be a part of where we get a notification that like, Hey, somebody's writing an article with this, topic, would you like to chime in as an expert on this topic, right? So for example, for the why keto is bad for you article that when it call out like, Hey, who wants to weigh in on this? So the people writing the article are not experts in any of this. They're just experts in reaching out to people that are experts and uh, quote unquote experts and, and getting a quote from them. And so likely the people that said keto is bad, um, you know, what I've seen clinically is the people that are saying it's bad are going to be um, clinicians who have never tried it themselves and or never implemented it in any of their patients. Um, so we're getting a heart from that. Oh, how do I do that here? Okay. I'm not a millennial. I can't do a heart with my hands. So yeah, you're uh, gonna have to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah, I'm just, I can't do that. Um, that yeah, was so, uh, that was a well, heart. that's not ketogenic. I like Jim says, Hey Simon, but oh, what hey, about Jim, me? What's I, up? Am I chop liver, Jim? No shout out to me. Hey, uh, hey, hey, don't mess with Jim. He was saying hi to me. <laughs> okay. Hi. 
All right. Uh, never mind. I'll just go on. on well, maybe if you could do a better heart with your hand, then you'd get more shout outs from Jim. I'm just saying. It's like, <laughs> that's a heart that eats way too many carbs and sugar. It's just, yeah. well, that was good. Guppy I, can, I, can do the, I can do the fish lips. Here's something else that um, the guy I got blocked that may have wanted to see. Um, here's a family yeah. trait that we have. This doesn't work on just the audio only. If you're listening to audio only, I'm sorry you're missing out right now. So You're missing uh, out on the uh, – yeah. Well, St. Patrick's Day is coming. I can make a clover with my tongue. So right. talent, that's pure I feel talent. lucky. I feel lucky right now. That's good. <laughs> I feel like you've blessed clovers. us all. You've blessed yes. the show, Carol. Oh, okay. Finally. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Oh, see, I can't do that. All right. I am definitely. I it was looks like I was, a that looks like a gang sign. Like after you've been kicked out of the gang, like they don't let you in or something. You know? <laughs> I did not. I I was born in the proper uh, decade. The fact that I can't make a heart with my hands, it's it's proven. It's just a circle. That's it. The world. I love the world. That's what this is. Is a circle with my hands. We're um, all one circle in the world. Yes. We all come together. We're all uh, one circle. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh, where was I at with my story before Jim? So, well, we were talking about the uh, the differences between the so called you know expertise out there, and it's not just with the ketogenic diet, you know, like like milk, half the country will say milk is good for you, and half will say it's bad for you, half the country will say, Oh, you have to go vegan, and the other half will say you need more meat in your diet. So, it, it, it becomes, uh, I think, for the layman out here who are not as credentialed as you, Carol, it becomes confusing and borderline annoying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think there's so many people out there that want to take better steps for their health, but how, when half right. of the articles are saying one thing and half are saying the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for my clients, luckily they've got me, they're like, why does this article say this? And why does this one say this? So I can help them you know, tease out the parts that are incorrect in one of them and understand like the bias that people have, uh, you know, when they're saying this is bad for you. So, you know, so to continue on that, you know, the article written and quoted with experts, um, the people that are saying that keto is bad for you are, again, they're clinicians that have never studied it uh, scientifically. They've never actually implemented it in themselves or their patient or clients. Because what we see over and over again is that when any clinicians have done, you know, either of those things, they're, they're totally converted and they're totally a fan. They see the power of it for providing huge transformations in health and, um, you know, doing it as a sustainable way of changing their habits. So that's, that's why there's an article out there that says that. And then, you know, the converse is that somebody, people also are searching for is keto. Okay. Is it safe? And so then they, that same exact website will write the other article because all they care about is people clicking through and getting traffic. They don't actually, they have no incentive to actually get to the bottom of the, the truth or anything. So um, you'll find that all over the place for every topic. So that's- You want uh, the truth? Come to Keto Chat Live, people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, coffee. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, I told Carol that I quit coffee because I'm trying to get healthier, as I mentioned, that, you know, as I'm going, watching my, unfortunately watching my father go downhill. And- I was, I thought you're not supposed to have too much caffeine or coffee. It's considered bad for you. And Carol says, no, <laughs> Carol says it's not bad for you, but people say it is. So I don't know what to tell you. Like you read articles or you'll read, you'll talk to your doctor and they'll say, don't drink so much coffee. You know, as I was a morning radio DJ in Hawaii, I, um, which I had to give up to come back to care for my dad. I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning and it was the coffee was, yeah, it was getting hardcore. So I was going through almost like a pot a day because you start off in the morning. I would do a cup when I woke up, then I'd do a cup when I got to the station and then, you know, it's a long show. So sometimes you do another cup and then you'd come home and chill for a little bit and then you have other things to do. And then, so I'd have more coffee. It was just becoming pretty hardcore. So yeah, I'm drinking yerba mate. Okay. Okay. To get in, to get involved with, you know, to, touch my inner hippie but what well you know but what about those poor uh people down there that are my you know farming that leaf for you is it a leaf is it a root i don't even know what it is i think it's just dirt i think it's just dirt with seasoning seasoned dirt <laughs> is that what it tastes like I think that's what it is yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's good. Well, it's good. Dirt's well, good about, for you. How about the fact? Okay, so like you were attributing uh, having to get up really early and feeling tired and not optimal with drinking a lot of coffee. But what if it was the fact that you were just weren't getting enough sleep that was worse for your health than drinking too much coffee? That this this symptom, uh, you know, having to drink a lot of coffee was more about like the lack of energy and and adequate sleep. Maybe that's way more documented being bad for your health. So perhaps that's what it is. You know, maybe the confusion is that um, people that have poor poor sleep hygiene, that they don't have a lot of energy, drink a lot of coffee to make up for that. So it's not the coffee that's doing it. It's the, um, the other side. I think I was getting good sleep. Okay. You know, I would go to bed. I'd crash early. I mean, I was going to bed some nights like eight or nine o'clock just to wake up by 4 a.m. Yeah. It was on the Tom Brady sleep pattern thing. Is that how he sleeps? Yeah, he goes to bed at eight and wakes up at four. Okay. Well, that sounds like a. And you know me, I'm such a champion. <laughs> oh, let's see. We got Dad Bosworth again. Keto carnivore saved my life. The damaged tramadol. DD to me, did to me. Did two, what, two what, is no tramadol? what is tramadol? Is that that's like a medication or it's a um, it. yeah, it's a it's a uh, uh, sedative type of medication. Um, mm. Likely it's uh, often it's used for pain management. So I'm not sure what Dad Bosworth had going on that they prescribed that. But um, yeah, well, we're happy to hear that you're on the mend or you're feeling better. Two years, yeah. no carbs. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. That's a long time. There is there. I have not uh, tried that myself. I tend to do like, you know, uh, l- light plant diet is kind of what I would say I follow. Um, but there's a whole group of people out there that are finding like a hundred percent animal based diet actually like feels best in their body. And, and, uh, Oh, the- Oh, he did the carnivore diet. The yeah. actual, the one that Jordan Peterson's on. <laughs> He talked about that on the Joe Rogan. So just oh, okay. me. I thought you were making a joke, but no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. He talked about that on the keto carnivore. Same oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's a whole movement of people out there just finding that, uh, like if they eliminate plants from their diet, that they just feel the best they ever have. So is there yeah. a pastrami diet I can go on Carol? Yeah. Or I just I mean, eat pastrami hey, all hey, day. Dad, how, how would you, Simon makes some amazing pastrami. Oh, actually I had your, uh, brisket. I don't yeah. know the difference between brisket and pastrami, but like the pickling, I, it has I, to do with I, the spices and the pickling. I'm pretty sure I could, I could eat your brisket like all day long. Oh baby. Uh, <laughs> I love it when you talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God we're four states away from each other now. Like that's yeah. Check that's out only- this brisket. Okay, all right. Continue. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, Gabrielle saying I don't think I could do twenty total grams of carbs a day. All right, so that's a good segue. Thank you for that, Gabrielle. Let's go into our next. You know, let's go talk about that a little bit more. Then, so the twenty total grams of carbs a day. So, um, yeah. So this is number one. Yeah, J E. I feel best with carnivore, but I. Just don't stay with it. Glutton for misery. <laughs> well, at least you're not a glutton for gluten. Ooh, yeah. That's like that. Which, which most of probably most of the world is a glutton for gluten. I know. Yeah. I know. Well, that's yeah. really cool. This is really see, I'm already learning things. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. This is this okay. is all for you. Like this was actually a cleverly designed ruse. Like the whole show is just about teaching Simon things. So. Okay. So wait a minute. If someone's going to go on the carnivore diet, do they have to be really, really meticulous to make sure it's like a high quality meat? Like, a, I don't know, maybe like a grass fed or no hormones or antibiotics or like, no. do they need to be even more meticulous? No, actually. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the 20 total grams of carbs here in a moment. So uh, the, um, so that's one of the, the things that people really enjoy about carnivores is simplicity, right? Like anything that comes from an animal and there are actually grades of that as well. So some people will include dairy products and eggs and fish. Some people go to the extreme of only red meat is the only thing they eat. And here's one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that when you're in, uh, so carnivore is a type of keto diet. Like it's going to like anytime carbs are low enough, that's a ketogenic diet. So um, carnivore is definitely keto. A lot of people will say like keto carnivore or carnivore keto. It's just a, like a more extreme version of keto basically. So okay. um, when we're in ketosis, it actually increases our liver's ability to detox things. It upregulates the enzymes in our liver 
the detox things. So it makes it so that you don't have to be so concerned about the quality of the products. Like you don't have to worry about like everything 100% grass fed and, uh, you know, uh, organic and all this stuff free. It's pretty interesting that, um, that that ends up being totally irrelevant. So for example, like, you know, even just going regular keto, not going to extreme of carnivore is that, um, keeping carbs low and not worrying about the quality of the foods is, is you're going to get 99%, maybe, I don't know what the percentage is, say 95% of the health benefits, just reducing those carbs. So that's why, uh, if anybody's ever seen the movie, um, fathead, um, dude went and ate fast food, low carb for 30 days. It kind of was a, um, uh, a, like a, wow. A call back to um, Morgan Spurlock supersize me, right? So uh -huh. Morgan Spurlock set out to say that um, you know, oh, fast food is what's making us fat, and we can't, we can't, and unhealthy. So Fathead is a movie um, that shows that you could eat fast food for 30 days as long as you're doing it low carb. And he showed that all of his health markers, his weight came down, and everything got better. So it's more about the uh, combination of foods the highly refined carbohydrates and over consuming them. And because of the combinations of the foods that are, that are causing that. So, uh, yeah, the quality of the food really is, is secondary to the health improvements. Like it's not something to be wor worried about. So we should just eat fast food every day. <laughs> you could, you could, but you also okay. need to be mindful of the choices. Like it's not soda and fries. Uh, you're going to be having, you know, the bunless burger with a diet soda and a side salad perhaps. So, so which is the best dairy queen blizzard for uh keto Carol, which one would you recommend? Uh, it's called diet Coke. Uh, that's diet what Coke? that is. Okay. Yeah. So, well, Gabrielle said that she's doing 50 grams of carbs. And I remember when I read the, uh, years ago, the Atkins book, that's what he yeah. recommended. So tell us the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So great. So, so easy rule number one for getting started with keto, either the first time or restarting it is 20 total grams of carbs. Uh, the reason for that, and actually if you, um, Atkins approach was for the first two weeks, he had everybody do that low. So that's what's called Atkins induction phase. And the reason for that is that, um, you've got to get carbs low enough to force your body to get back in that fat burning mode. So ketones are produced when you, when carbs are low enough, your body is burning fat as its primary fuel. And it's also making these ketones as an alternative fuel source since there aren't enough carbs. So the problem is that most people are so metabolically damaged that their body is really resistant to burning fat. Like it's stuck in carb burning mode. And so what I found, I call it carb no man's land. If carbs are, are too high, like 40 to 50 grams when people are starting out, or maybe, you know, if people aren't tracking really well, they're, they're in that zone where the carbs aren't low enough to force your body to get into fat burning mode and ketone production. And they're, they're, high, they're not high enough that you're going to get enough to burn carbs all day long. So you're in this zone where um, you're still stuck in carb burning mode, but it's not enough carbs to actually fuel your body. So you feel tired, um, lethargic, and you're asking like, why does everybody else say keto makes you feel so amazing and great? And I feel like garbage. So mm. this happens, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, the other nine rules in upcoming uh, episodes here, but, um, and I'll teach you some more strategies about how do you actually get to this point of uh, 20 total. So um, I found that working with everyone that I have, that if we do 20 total grams of carbs, that's going to get everybody into that state, typically within three to five days of starting out. Um, you're going to get into ketosis and you force your body to start burning that fat again. That's where the energy comes on board and all of that. So people long-term can find that they maybe have a higher carb tolerance, right? So they might be able to do 50 or even up to hundred grams of carbs a day uh, and maintain it. But what I found, so while Atkins had you do that after two weeks, you could raise your carbs. What I found is that most of the people that I'm working with, they need to stick with that low, really low carb amount for 18 to 24 months or longer to get all of the metabolic uh, healing and reversal so that they may have a higher carb tolerance later on. So, um, so, so Gabriella, Gabriella, how you feel, Gabrielle, how you're feeling? Yeah. Um, you want to let us know on it. I'm just curious where you're at now, as far as how you feel. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Um, J E. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. Anything else? What, 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 uh, 
Any last viewer questions? Chime in now because. Uh... Well, 20 grams or less. They're supposed to track it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We'll talk about that coming up. And what's going to happen? What can they expect to have happen in the first few days? Like, you know, if Gabrielle goes from 50 to 20, what can she expect to have happen? Yeah. Well, so part of what will happen is that um, your body is still stuck in that carb burning mode and it's going to, your, your brain and your body want you to continue to eat carbohydrates. And so um, it's going to make you feel hungrier. It's going to make you crave carbs a lot more during that period of time, but you've got to stick with it knowing that, you know, in just a few days, you're going to get to that keto promise land where the energy and the fat burning and the appetite go away. So, um, so you, so will you lead us to the promised land, Carol? We... <laughs> yes. Okay, good. So, I mean, yes, I know that, that you're Jewish and my promised land is going to be different than yours, but uh, uh, the, I can lead you to the keto promised land for sure. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Carol. We need we need a savior. <laughs> I'm that that's my secret fantasy oh, is I want to be the Oh, you know, I fasted the, for 14 oh. hours and then I ate my first meal. And it's a it's a cliffhanger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And we don't know what happened yet. Um 14 hours. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah, so that's what you'll you'll feel is that uh you're going to your body's going to crave carbs pretty intensely. Um you're going to feel hungrier but stick with it. And then you're going to get to the other side and you're uh, what's, what's the, the chicken's going to get to the other side and, and because it wanted to cross the road. No, that's dumb. So that's uh, why. <laughs> that's why. Cause wow. this whole the time. carb we lover know. crossed the road to get to ketosis. That's the joke, right? That's the truth. Why did the carb lover cross the keto bridge? To bridge get or road? To, the side, to get to the other side. <laughs> Brilliant. You All right, are this is our, not a joke Carol, you are workshop. our savior. <laughs> it's not a joke writing uh, workshop. All right. Well, hey, um, hey, okay. you know what's coming up in next episode? What? We're going to talk all about how do you know how much protein. This is one of the most controversial uh, topics in all of keto is can you get too much protein? Do I need to limit protein? Does protein turn into uh, glucose and all of that? So that's up next on next week's episode. So, Okay. One more question I have um, and then before we log off. So I know there's a belief out there that when it comes to counting carbohydrates, you can minus the fiber. So for instance, if you yeah. eat a thing of broccoli and it's five grams of carbs, but three grams of fiber, you do five minus three. Hold on. Let me get my pen. Wait, yeah. two, two. I, sorry. Get your abacus. Uh, yeah. Let me. Stars. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, depends, so the, it depends on your Zodiac sign, how many net carbs you can eat. Oh, uh, beautiful. No. I get a Mercury's in retrograde. That's, you got oh to factor that in. So wait, so. What do you feel about the whole fiber thing? Yeah, yeah. It's, it can get super confusing. So Dr. Eric Mes Westman was the one that uh, is, is uh, you know, the one that came up with the idea of net carbs where you don't have to count the fiber. But you can find him all over the internet now that he says, I regret ever bringing up this whole subject, right? You read the original Atkins books. He doesn't talk about net carbs and how you're going to take out the fiber and all that kind of stuff. So, um and also it's been capitalized on by all the food manufacturers, right? So they've got these pseudo fibers in there that your body just processes like sugar, but they get to call it fiber. So these bars and things like that have like two net carbs or six net carbs. They're total, it's not even true. And it's not the way that the body works too. So um, in the beginning, simple is better. And so just count all carbs, total carbs, 20 total grams, doesn't matter where they come from. Part of what that does then is it eliminates all of those processed food products that have like 20 total carbs in, in for one little bar or something like that. So it draws a line in the sand. It helps you focus on real whole foods and uh, you're going to um, get better results too. So in the beginning, keep it totally simple, you know, farther down the road in other episodes, we're going to talk about you know, how some people, um, as they develop some metabolic flexibility and they want to figure out which carbs work for them better, there's definitely a lot difference in the types of carbohydrates. So when we focus on just 20 total grams of carbs, that's going to get, you know, most everyone into ketosis as quick as possible. It eliminates all those uh, pseudo foods out there in the world. And uh, just basically, it's just a reality check of getting started with the right track. So so, that, so then for someone like Gabrielle, who's at 50 and 
feels that it's going to be a struggle to get to 20. Yeah. Should she do ramp it down or just go complete cold Turkey and just, yeah. Like, well, um, I'm not able to give any advice specifically about what uh, Gabrielle specifically could do. I mean, you could since you're not a medical provider, but okay. uh, I can give general information about what I coach my clients on. That's uh, my safety zone is that I can give some general information for that. So is not uh, a weird world that the one that knows more can't give the advice, but the one that doesn't know anything yeah. Well, there's, there was a huge deal with, um, uh, a doctor that's in, uh, South Africa actually. And he tweeted out some information cause somebody was a, a pregnant mother that was asking like, is keto safe for a pregnant mother? And he had to go through, I don't even know how long the trial was, but it was like year or longer where they were trying to take away his, his medical license because he'd said like, yeah, I don't, I don't, it's not a problem. You know, so that's why we've got to be more careful. And it's it, basically I can, you know, uh, it and, and, you know, groups out there, uh, you know, social media groups and things like that, they'll, they'll shut you down if you're giving out medical advice. And so I can't give any specifics to any one person unless they're actually my paid client. That's, that's my safety bubble, but I can give out information and education and we can entertain you here, which is what we're also trying to do. Um, yeah. So, so it's, if you're put on trial, we'll, yeah, we'll have to have a free. <laughs> Free Carol Freeman. Uh, yeah, I have to change careers then if that's the case. But yeah, well, you know, it's like if you go into Foot Locker and buy shoes, that dude could give you nutrition advice all day long. He could tell that's you usually where I go. That's usually where I go for nutrition <laughs> advice is to the uh, college kid at Foot Locker. Yeah. It's a good source. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if, if, if a person in general was, you know, 50 grams of carbs currently, and they're not getting the results that they want, you know, some signs that you're having too many carbohydrates for your body's tolerance is that you're not going to be noticing that like energy that you hear every, everyone else talking about on keto. Um, you're, uh, you're going to be having a lot of cravings and maybe uh, ex excessive appetite. Those are going to be some of the things that a person may notice with there. So um, now barring any medications or anything like that. Cause if you're, if anyone's on any medications, you, you, you don't want to necessarily go, uh, cold Turkey, but I definitely find for my clients that if they just start out 20 total grams of carbs from day one, they're going to be, they're, they're quicker into ketosis than if they drag it out. Um, okay. my personal journey. So I knew that I was going to do 20 total grams of carbs. Um, but I spent the week before I actually committed to keto just tracking the food that I was eating. And that actually uh, opened my eyes to how many carbs I was eating at that point. And then I found myself like gradually decreasing. I, I was at the point like before I had hardcore committed to keto, I was probably about 100 grams of carbs a day just by being mindful about the things I was eating. So I went from 100. And before that, I was probably like at 300 or 500 grams of carbs a day. So I went down to 100. And then the next week I was at 20 total grams of carbs. And that's what I do with my, my clients is to have them start wherever they're at, just start at 20 total grams. So, okay. Yeah. Um, Mike's got a little question about, um, uh, I've heard you should count half of the sugar alcohols. Um, not, not true, not true at all. Um, and this is something, so gosh, this is like a really complex topic, Mike, and so we'll be covering this in, in some different like upcoming um, episodes. I'll talk about like, why do we avoid sweeteners? Actually, that's one of our top 10 uh, rules to follow or the easy rules is going to be talking about that. So stay tuned for another episode and we'll, we'll dive into that deep because that's, I could talk about that for a couple hours, but um, good question. But um, 20 total grams of carbs. So one of the reasons also that you're going to be um, counting total carbs, Mike, is that things that have sugar alcohols in them are going to be off the table. And I found that that is uh, a shortcut to getting a lot better results, getting rid of cravings by avoiding all sweeteners. But that's going to be an upcoming episode where we talk about that more. So, um, and then uh, JE, I don't lose like I used to, but, but I still feel great when I do and stay low carb. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Excellent. Well, your hair's looking good, and the snout is really nice there, J.E. Oh. Really <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about me. Thank you. Oh, it's No, I'm just saying, you know, you got a really healthy snout, and uh, yeah. you're looking good there in your photo. That's good. I can see it's working. Beautiful, beautiful coat. Hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, 
Shall we wrap wrap this up? You uh, any more questions on your mind there, Simon Kaufman? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you can't have sugar alcohols, can you just have alcohol with sugar? Or don't answer that. <laughs> That's also coming up in an uh, upcoming. Okay, good. So yeah, gosh, I can't tell you it all in one. We'd have like a seventeen hour uh, one one episode here. So why not a marathon? Yeah, like an all week telethon well, keto marathon with Jerry Lee Lewis. Hey, the, somebody in the future right now is on that marathon. They're like, I'm speaking to future listener of Keto Chat Live that is going to be binge wa- listening or watching uh, nice. these episodes. So nice. there is somebody that's doing that right now, but it's not right now. It's in the future, but it's right now to them. Perfect. Okay. We got one laughy face. All right. We've, we've, now we've, we've checked the box of entertaining. Good. We didn't do very good at arguing though. So, <laughs> well, maybe yeah. that's something people have to look forward to then. Maybe you just need to agree with me more, Carol. <laughs> no, Wait, <laughs> it's not improv. Yes. And yeah. Isn't that the yeah. secret to any uh, reality TV show is drama? Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, we we didn't have enough drama. We'll is that what they we'll told you on, on Millionaire Matchmaker? Bring the drama. I'll, I'll try to uh, come up with some more insults. I think that's what people oh, want to hear. Wait, I don't know. Wait, I'll feel. I'll feel so. No, no, no. We're all love. It's all love. And, yes, you know, we're we're one love, one planet circle love. Yeah, yeah. Your heart looks like it needs less carbs. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's probably true. Yeah. Long line line of uh, my fa- my family history is diabetes and dementia, so um, I've got a lot of motivators. Wow, you have a lot to be proud of. That's wonderful. <laughs> Fun fact: I also found out my original Freeman ancestor was a uh, British felon that got shipped here as a tr- uh, prison transport. So that's fun fact. So a free man that wasn't free. That's good. literally not. Yeah, yeah. So okay, it was ironic. All right. Well, uh, let's let's wrap this up. Uh, the next episode is going to be all about protein. So come back uh, and listen to the next episode. What do we want people to do in the meantime, Simon? Uh, 20 grams of carbs <laughs> or less. Also, continue the conversation in our Facebook group. So if you that haven't is. joined that so far, Keto Chat Lifestyle. <laughs> yes. Continue the conversation and tune in next week. Yeah. Yeah, so 20 total grams of carbs. All right, that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Thumbs up, share the love, uh, give us the circle, or if you can do the heart with your hands, that's cool too. So yeah, all right, thanks for listening and watching. We'll see you all soon. Bye.